of the things about watching football, particularly when it's bad, when it's really drab and there's no joy, and I do feel for much of this season, a lot of the joy has been sucked out of watching West Ham. When it's like that, you seek, you seek out hope. Little nuggets of, of joy, little little bits of flair, and anything that can really sort of lift you uh, from the, the mundane rubbish that you've been watching all season. I remember when Sam Allardyce was in charge and we had a player called Mauro Zerati. Now, I was infinitely aware that Zerati was not the best player that, that we'd had in the history of West Ham. He won't be trouble in any legends lists, Mauro Zerati. However, at the time... <laughs> The football was so bad, it was so boring, it was so negative, it was awful. Zerati was the one bit of joy. He was. I used to look at it, I said, oh, you know, good Zerati's coming on. We might get a dribble, we might get a shot, we might get something. Just a little bit of solace in there. When Zerati and Ravel Morrison are both on the pitch at the same time, wow, what a treat. And I do believe, maybe it's my, my memory playing tricks on me. Did we once see, in a game, maybe I'm wrong, in a game against Fulham, did I once see Joe Coles, Zerati and Ravel Morrison on the pitch? May, may, as I say, I'm getting on a bit now. Maybe my mind is playing tricks on me. But my point is it was so bad that, that I, I, I would seek out little bits of enjoyment in what was, you know, a, a crap period in the club's history. Just watch the game against Larnaca, and I'm doing my video now for the next day. Today, the day you're watching it. And I was a... I was about to do my match report as a video, and but there was something in the back of my mind, and it was Maxwell Cornet. Because when I was watching it, I found myself having that, shall we call it, Zerati-itis. I had a bit of Zerati-itis. I found myself looking at it and thinking, oh, hold on. Hold on a minute. And even though it's been dross, and even though it's been crap, and even though I've got no reason to expect anything from the team, from David Moyes, or especially from Maxwell Cornet, I couldn't help myself but look at him and thought, Actually, he looks pretty good. <laughs> and and I thought, do you know what? I thought, I'm going to do the video about Maxwell Cornet. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Because if you do that video, you'll publish the video and everyone will say, come on, get a grip, Gonzo. You know, it's, it's only against Larnaca. It was like a training match and all those things are true. So I have actually recorded this video for a second time because the first one was all a, it was, was a little bit boring. I found myself discussing something I didn't want to discuss. And actually, I thought, no, actually, I'm going to discuss Maxwell Cornet. So, uh, you know, whatever. That's, that's just what I wanted to talk about now. I was really pleased and really impressed with what I saw. And I think I've done enough videos being critical of the signing. I think I've done enough videos being critical of Cornet's lack of involvement. Uh, I think I've spoken plenty about uh, about the history of the player and about how he's, you know, how he has a history of being avail uh, unavailable when, you know, maybe hasn't had the biggest career threatening injuries. But all that, oh, I think all that's passed now. And actually, I'm going to allow myself to, to look forward and enjoy what I saw. And I didn't see much. He was brought on in the 89th minute. So, I mean, it was going to be nine minutes. It ended up being 15 minutes because they played six minutes injury time. But what I saw, I really liked. I, I liked his creativity. I liked the fact that he was direct. And I just thought to myself, actually, I'm not going to stop myself enjoying that just because it was against the lesser team. And they were crap, by the way, Larnica. They really were. They actually, they had 11 or 12 corners, um, but never really threatened at all. I don't think Ariola had a, a save, a, a real threatening save to make, let's put it that way, until the 89th minute. But there he was. Cornet laid on a wonderful chance for uh, for Paqueta, which I was really pleased to see. It, it wasn't just direct run, it was direct decision-making. He, he released a pass at the right time. I thought the way he, he turned really well, there was a point where he dribbled out of trouble. There was enough there to look and, and see and to have me scrambling around and looking at some of the archive footage of, of what he did um, at his, well, uh, at Burnley, basically. And I, I'm reluctant to sit here and say he can save our season, but I'll be, I'll be lying if I said I didn't think it. I, I did. The truth of the matter is I did. And the only reason I didn't come out and say it was, I, I, once again, the tail's wagging the dog. And I'm thinking, well, if, if I say that on a video, I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to get a load of abuse in the comments. But I couldn't help it. I did. I felt that. And it was Zerati itis again. I thought, yes, I like this player. Um, I want to see more of him. I want him involved quickly. And... I mean, it's it's a tough one, really, because I still think that the squad was has been badly handled. I think it's been mismanaged. Tomorrow I'll be doing a video about uh, the mismanagement from the owners' side of things, certainly. And now I feel that that maybe the ownership are baiting baiting the fans. Um, 
but I th think from the recruitment aspect, the way David Moyes has takes too long to bed his players in. I think the way he makes excuses why they're not playing. I think I, I don't like a lot of what I've seen this season. But I did look at Cornet and think, okay, if if he plays, if he can get fit, and then from the international break, so we play Aston Villa, uh, then we play Larnaca again, then there's an international break, and then at, and basically we play again against Southampton. Well, if that happens, and we get Cornet and Cornet's playing, and Zuma's playing alongside of Gerd, and, and by the way, oh, I tell you what, Kera at right back terrifies me. His positioning is so bad. But if basically David Moyes gets to play his chosen team, I thought, OK, maybe, just maybe, we won't get relegated. Uh, which is nothing to boast about, far from it. But at the moment, I'll take it. Because I think we'd probably look all right. And that's not, I don't think that's any validation or any vindication on David Moyes' part. Because I do think he's, he's handled it badly. Shouldn't be in this position. But we, we have lacked pace and direct running. And, and fast decision making in wide positions. To watch Pablo Fornells, and, and I love Fornells to, to bits. I'm not going to spin the camera around. Got a really nice um, like poster thing about Fornells up there. I really like him. Love his attitude, love his endeavour, love his work rate. But I think he spent the last two or three years being trained as, as, a, as a defensive winger, as a, as a holding wide player. Um, and I look at him in a game, again, like we just seen against Larnaca, where there's no need for a, a sort of holding wide player. Actually, the fullback, I was going to say the fullback could deal with it absolutely fine. Maybe in Kira's. Um, in in that instance, it's not entirely accurate what I said there. But what you really need is somebody to do something going forward. And I think I do look at him, and I think it's I think he's been coached out of him. I I think his passing was atrocious. I think he's lost lost any crossing ability he had. He hasn't got a trick. Can't dribble. Uh, he's too slow to impact the game. And I, I I do I do feel for him because there was definitely a lot more flamboyance to his game when he arrived at West Ham. But I think that maybe just whatever. Two and a half, three years under Moisey of, of tracking back and tackling and, and marking and positional play. I, I think all of that stuff at, at the peak of his career, and maybe a player like him who was, was so good in that Spain under 21 team, should possibly have been working on his technique. It feels like it's gone, and I, I find it stifling. And I've said this on numerous occasions I think we play with one less, one less attacker when Fournells plays because I think Moyes looks at him and thinks, oh, he's an attacker. I'll play him as my. Attacking wide player, but he's not. He's not. He is. He has now become a defensive player. It's, it's just is. Um, plays a defensive player that plays that's utilised forward up the pitch. Not a defensive player that's at centre back, but he's there for his closing down. His work rate. And anyway, so I thought it was quite refreshing, really, to see a Corne come on and provide the ability to get in. There was a couple of times where he was in line. Um, I, I remember, I've, I've not seen much of him, but I remember when he did first start at West Ham at the start of the season, he was offside quite a lot. Not quite a lot, all the time. But it does mean he's playing on the shoulder. And there were a couple of times where the ball just didn't come, yet he was on the shoulder, the pass was there. Uh, there, was, there was a point where he took up a really good position and Piquetta couldn't quite pick out the pass. The, I mean, the, the pass that Cornet had for Paqueta was excellent was excellent and unfortunately what you would demonstrate what we saw there was Paqueta's lack of pace is so there's not much pace in the team let's be fair that there never has been that's why Corne is quite important really to this so I, I'm I'm looking forward to it I I understand I, and you know I could be disappointed very very quickly Corne can get an injury and and the, the chances of Corne being available for West Ham for the remainder of the season are slim aren't they? It's, um, he's not got the best track record. I think for years, it, you know, it might be all right. Um, just other things in the, in the game, as I say, because I'm not doing a match report, just discuss it now. Uh, Antonio, two goals. Well, that last one, what was that all about, by the way? Curled it. I didn't think he could curl the ball like that, so good for him. Hopefully it gives him a little bit of um, confidence from now until the end of the season. Obviously, you've got two goals, a heading, headed goal, um, nice little dinked cross from Ben Rama. Uh, glanced it in there quite nice. I mean, he was unmarked. He wouldn't get that opportunity. And so, Antonio wouldn't get that opportunity in the Premier League, I'm pretty sure. I mean, they were, they were worse. Larnaca, I thought, were, even though it's only 2-0, I thought Larnaca were worse than Nottingham Forest. But um, but it was still good and good for him and good for his confidence and, and good for us because even though Danny Ings may well be the first choice, um. 
I don't want to say too much about Skamaka, but let, let's put it this way: Antonio is is, is going to be our second choice. Uh, to put it as nicely as I can, Skamaka doesn't look fit yet, and I'm not saying that to be diplomatic or to pull any punches. I'm just, I'm just, I just, uh, I, I've got, I got my suspicions on um, with him now, really. And uh, well, you, you'll you'll know. I don't think he'll be here next season. Uh, it's not. It's not a good thing to watch uh, unfold what's happening now. So um, let, let's call it a lack of match sharpness at the moment, and we'll deal with Skamaka in um, you know possibly uh, during the the international break. Uh, be interesting to see. I don't know. Actually, I don't know. I don't know if Italy playing any games. Be interesting to see what happens there. Actually, that will be an interesting one. I hadn't thought of that. Um, uh, look, a, a successful mission from Moyes in this this particular instance, where you know you'd have to say. Going back second leg, uh, uh, I messed it up some part. Uh, second leg at the London Stadium, that's really good. Uh, so two nil up on that. Flynn Downs obviously got his cards. I felt he tried to get the card just before that. Um, there was, if you remember, if you watched the game, there was a little bit where Bowen got kicked twice just before that. The reason that the last guy kicked Bowen is because Downs had just fouled him just before that. I think Downs was trying to get the yellow card just then. So he got it quite quickly afterwards, really. Uh, so, yeah, Downs will miss the next game, which will, which will free him up for the... would be for the quarterfinals, wouldn't it? Which is which is amazing, really. It's Look, I'm not reading I'm not reading too much in, into this at all. I still think, you know, it, it's we're infinitely... It's infinitely possible that we lose uh, to Aston Villa, and, and I think that might come too early for Corne. Put it this way. This is what I say at the at the start of the video. It's it's like a Zarate moment. It's a little kernel of hope. It's a little just a moment. It's like a moment where I look at it and think, oh, that's good. That gave me a little bit of joy, a little bit of hope, a little bit of expect um expectancy, maybe. But when I say expectancy, I don't expect it against Aston Villa. Because here's what I think will happen. And this is why Moyes it's gone too far with Moyes, and this is why regardless of what happens this season, I'd rather he wasn't here next season. Um, I think, let's say it was nil nil against Aston Villa. Oh, after sixty five minutes, let's let's say that was that was the case. I mean, that that would be progress, wouldn't it? But just bear with me on this one. If that was happening, and then David Moyes wanted to make a, a wide substitution, and you have Ben Rama starting and Bowen was starting, he's not going to take Bowen off. So forget that. That okay. So what's he going to do with Ben Rama? I still think right now that if he was going to substitute Ben Rama, he would bring four nails on. And, and that's that's the thing. And that's the thing that stops me a little bit with my hope with it. Because no matter how much I look at Cornet and enjoy what I've seen, oh, OK, he looks quite sharp. Moises said he was sharp in training. He looks quite sharp. Maybe, just maybe, he could be a handy player for 20 minutes at the end of the game. The thing that stops me going full on and being really hopeful is I just don't think Moises adventure is enough to do it. 